let's talk about curing meat. So when it comes to pork, all you need is salt. What's going to happen when you salt cure pork or any other meat is over time through an osmotic process, the salt is going to draw, draw moisture out of the cell membranes and prevent spoilage by not only salinating the meat, but reducing the moisture level. So the spoilage bacteria and molds have less of a chance to get a foothold. And it's also going to create an environment that because it's low moisture is going to prevent the uh, active phase of C. botulinum where it would produce the botulism toxin. The use of sodium nitrate, pink salt, frog powder, what have you, is somewhat controversial and there has been a lot of hubbub of late that it's a bad idea to eat cured meat. While I agree it would be a bad idea to eat nothing but cured meat, I think that, uh, you know, once a week or so, having some sodium nitrate cured meat is not going to uh, going to harm you. I mean, I'm just saying that from my own sense of things and of the things that we should be concerned about. I think that's pretty low on the list. So you can do this cure with just sugar and salt and you will get a tasty product that's going to be far superior to any of the bacon that you're going to buy in the grocery store. But sodium nitrate does a couple of things that I'm interested in. One, it gives you that nice pink color in the finished smoked product, which can't really be achieved from salt. I mean, you can be pink-ish, but it takes a lot of salt to get to that place. So you end up, in order to get that pink look, you end up with a salty taste. So the other thing that it does is it helps break down all the connective uh, fascia and things like that. So you end up with a more tender product as a result at the end. So uh, one other thing of note, when you see uncured bacon in the grocery store, it's a lie. What they're saying is they're not using this sodium nitrate in the cure. Instead, they're using celery powder, spinach powder, shard powder, something like that, which is rich in sodium nitrate. It's cured with the same chemical compounds as it would be if you just used the measurable, accurate, understandable salt alternative. And they say it's uncured because it doesn't have this in it. It's got just as much sodium nitrate. So you're not giving yourself any perceived health benefit or whatever from buying the uncured bacon. So that's my personal taste. If you want to avoid that, great. You can just do salt and brown sugar. Just understand that it's going to be a slightly different product when you come out the other end. So, and you want to use a kosher salt or a non-iodized salt, something that's not going to impart an iodine flavor or affect the color. So not table salt. You need to use your canning salt, kosher salt, uh, sea salt, Himalayan pink salt, something like that that does not have added iodine. So the math on this, we ended up with 86 pounds of bellies, so I'm mixing up enough cure to do 100 pounds of bacon, but I'll just use 86% of it and make sure that I apply that to all surfaces, and then I'll add any extra that I have left over after salting them into the bag that they're going to cure in. And I've done this several ways. When I first started making bacon, I would uh, use just the salt and sugar in equal parts and put it on there. First batch I did, I left that cure on there for a week and it was so salty you couldn't eat it. And then I started using that method. And then after one day, rinsing off the salt and just allowing it to sit there and cure and let that osmotic action cure the bacon all the way to the center of the belly where you get a change in texture and then smoked it. It was better, not as good as this method. So by using these ratios where we're going by the weight of the meat, in terms of how much cure we're going to apply, I cover them on the outside, wrap them, put them in the refrigerator, turn them every day, every couple of days, 
and allow all that cure to absorb into the meat and then the salinity ends up being perfect. So by weighing ahead of time, doing the math, applying just enough to get the job done, we'll get the result that we're after. So what we're gonna use is four cups of kosher salt, one cup of Instacure number one. So this is not straight prog powder. It's not straight sodium nitrate. It is 6.25% sodium nitrate. And then four cups of packed brown sugar. So as I said, I'll mix these three together really evenly. You want to make sure that's a good, smooth, homogenous mix. Everything's evenly distributed so that the sodium nitrate doesn't cause burn spots on the meat or anything like that. And then once this is all mixed up, we'll coat all sides of our bellies, bag them up, and off into the fridge. So we have our six bellies. Three pigs. So in order to make bacon, my first step is I'll go through and I'll trim out any leaf lard that remains. This stuff is so soft, so fine grained that it does not smoke well. It ends up just kind of being mushy. So I'll clean up what little bits there are. I leave the ends and edges kind of ragged rather than square them off as is traditionally done. That way I can use these ends as ends and pieces and things like bean soups and pate and, and that sort of thing. So what we'll do is we'll get them all cured up and smoked and then we'll trim them and vacuum pack portions of slicing bacon. There's a leaf lard that I pulled off of our six belly slabs. So now I need to weigh all of this bacon so that I know how to do the math for the cure that I'm going to apply to them. So I've weighed myself holding the bus tub. Now I'll hold the bus tub with all the bacon in it and do the subtraction to determine how much meat we have. One other point of note is that oftentimes if you look at curing recipes, they'll call for dextrose as opposed to sucrose. And dextrose is a sugar made from corn and it's often used in curing recipes because it has a higher burn point than sucrose. Sucrose is very prone to caramelization. And so if you're doing sausages and things like that and you don't want them to burn on the grill, then it's good to use the dextrose. It's also a better food source for lactobacillus if you're looking for that fermented tangy flavor. It's a good way to go for that. For this, however, this is going to be smoked at a pretty low temperature for a pretty long time. And honestly, if I get a nice dark golden brown bark on these bacon slabs, that'll make me a happy farmer. So we're going to use the brown sugar for the flavor and not worry about the dextrose. If uh, you use dextrose, I would advise that you make sure it's from a non-GMO source, otherwise you'll be eating herbicide. So I'll mix this all up and then we'll get to seasoning up those slabs. So we have a bus tub to season our bellies in. I removed one cup from the mixed batch of cure for 100 pounds. And since we have 86 pounds, that should be just about right. And so each belly then will get a cup and a third of cure. So I'm gonna put the better part of a cup on this side, spread it around. You wanna make sure to get all the edges and ends really well. And rub this in. We'll flip it over put the other remaining portion for this belly and then we'll put two per bag and I'm just using a, a tall 
kitchen garbage bag. If you do that, make sure that they're unscented. So it's just plastic. Whatever is left in the bus tub of the cure will be poured into the bag. So there's the rest of that first cup. Here's the other third cup. And so that all of the appropriate cure for the amount of meat in that environment will be in there with it. And I found that this approach gives me a very predictable, very consistent product in the end. So in large part, we're relying on the osmosis to evenly distribute this. We're just giving it the best possible start. Okay, so this belly ready for the bag and on to the next one. There we go. Everything is covered with cure. You can see it's already starting to pull moisture out and give us that good color. So I'll flip these over every couple of days. They will cure for around 11 days. So these Kuni Kuni bellies are twice as thick as regular bacon. Uh, commercial hog belly, you can cure in about a week. I like to run these about 11 just so I get all the way down to the center. And then we'll rinse them, let them sit in the refrigerator for another day so that they can get a nice tacky lacquer on the outside that will take the smoke better and then we'll smoke them with maple and apricot wood our bacon has been curing for about nine days and you can see that the texture of these bellies has changed and so i'm rinsing all of the remaining cure of which there's very little off these bellies and then we'll allow them to dry overnight so that they have a better chance to take on a good smoke flavor. And then tomorrow we'll smoke them all up. It's a crisp November day. Our pork bellies I've been curing for 10 days. Also have a few lamb bellies. We're gonna add to the mix. Got our smoker heating up. Right now we just have briquettes rolling in the box over here. Got a nice ash on them. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, run these bellies without any smoke for a while, just to get a good lacquer on the outside of the meat and then we'll start adding apricot, maple, apple, and pear wood and smoke them for the day, get them up to about 145 degrees right before that fat starts melting. So what we're gonna do, lay these glorious bellies meat side down. Just like so. We have a second smoker going for the hams. The name of the game here is to run for about an hour at 150 or so and get that nice bark going on all these belly slabs. In here, and then we'll kick it up to about 200 with the wood and run it basically all day until we get to that place where the internal temperature is 145. These have been running for about an hour at 350, so we'll go ahead and add some whole wood and get some smoke rolling here.